representation of approximately 150 uh, folks from this community. The majority of those folks went uh, to shelters. Uh, we then transitioned almost immediately uh, from the evacuation mode to the security mode, uh, making sure that those areas that have been evacuation are secured. Uh, in addition to that, I would just add that while things are progressing positively and we are, are keeping, uh, you know, obviously uh, positive thoughts in mind, it's very important to note that the all clear has not been given yet. So we ask that folks not return to those areas that have been evacuated until our engineering folks tells us tell us that it's okay to return. So I would ask that you be a little bit patient, but make sure we're not coming back right now because it's not time. And then I would ask members of the public two other things. One of those things is I understand that this is an interesting weather uh, situation. A lot of people want to come out there and kind of videotape this and maybe take some selfies. This is not the time for that. And what that does is it causes us as the police department to pull vital assets from other areas to make sure that you don't hurt yourself and you're not in places where you don't need to be. So I'm asking you not to do that right now. Second to that, I would ask you that those barricades that you see up there are meant for you not to pass them. So please do not just take it upon yourself to move the barricade and go around it. The barricade is there for a reason. So I would ask you not to do that either because again, there's vital staffing issues that we're dealing with and we need those folks where we need them. So please don't do that. Uh, with that, I will now turn it over to Mrs. Jenny Huntington from Human Services. Hello. Our agency had the great pleasure to work with the Red Cross as well as Lynchburg City Schools to open and operate a shelter last evening at the request of the Emergency Operations Group. Um, we housed about 98 folks last night in our shelter and fed them breakfast this morning. Some of them are on their way today. Others remain at the shelter. We have about 90% of those folks who are evacuees and once the dam is secure and people can return to their homes, they'll be able to do that. About 10% of our folks were actually displaced by the flood. Their homes or apartments are damaged by floodwaters and rehoming them will take a little more time. The shelter will be open until that's accomplished and we will be working with those folks in the coming days to help them develop a housing plan for um, safe housing outside of the shelter. As mentioned, the shelter also has a pet component and the Lynchburg animal wardens have been very helpful in allowing people to bring their pets because it did increase their comfort. A lot of the folks that we have in that shelter are elderly or disabled in some way and those pets are very comforting to them as well as the children that are there. So that's been very successful. Um, the Red Cross has been instrumental in providing staff to help, the paperwork, the actual equipment such as um, cots and blankets. They're providing the food. Um, EC Glass is the location of our shelter on Memorial Avenue and we are still accepting um, people into the shelter if they need if they need assistance due to being placed, displaced by the floodwaters and we'll continue to do and take as long as the need is there. Um, and next I will let you hear from Bonnie Svercek, our, our city manager. Good afternoon. As Jenny said, I am Bonnie Severchek, city manager for the awesome city of Lynchburg. I just want to close by saying thank you to everyone involved in response and recovery. Special thanks to Dr. Guerin and the University of Lynchburg for this space in the very spur of the moment. I could not be more proud of the city team, many of which you have heard from, but many of which are sitting behind the cameras and many of which are out in the field doing the work that needs to be done right now. Um, I also want to thank countless community partners and our citizens for their efforts and ask for patience from everybody as we spend the next several days and perhaps weeks working towards resiliency from this, um, from this event. That concludes the formal part of this press conference. We now open it up for questions that I will most likely defer to the appropriate staff. Sure. Yeah, um, uh, yeah Mr. Mitchell, uh, can you tell us what uh, goes into determining uh, when the dam is stable? What are the factors that you look at? 
One of the, well, a number of things we look at. One is the how much damage was actually done to the dam by the overtopping of the spillway. Um, the second and most important thing that we look for is any type of seepage through the, the face of the dam or at the base of the dam. If there's no seepage, that means the water is still not penetrating through the dam. So as long as the water is not penetrating through the dam itself, it's considered to be stable. And there was some talk of, a, of opening a sluice gate. If, yeah. Is that true? Yes, there, there is an emergency spillway that right now is closed. We have to excavate the end of that spillway. It, it got covered by debris when the dam overtopped. So the plan is to excavate that probably tomorrow morning after the, this, these storms pass and then we'll open that gate and it, that will essentially lower the water levels in the lake. It may not drain the lake completely, but it will definitely lower the lake water levels and make the dam, dam overall more safe. Has this been an ongoing concern, this, this particular dam, is an earthen dam? I know it's been in place since 1935. Have there been concerns in the past? Well, it it's definitely it has an inadequate spillway by today's dam safety standards. And the city has been working for a number of years uh, in conjunction with Lynchburg College and or the University of Lynchburg now to come up with a plan to address that. It's a very complicated situation with the city actually owns the dam, the university owns the lake, and we're looking at a number of factors such as uh, environmental issues and, and that type of thing. So we, we are working on that and it has been a concern and we have plans and, and the works to address that in, in the future. Can you uh, clarify whether or not the dam is actually on an at-risk list at any time? It's, it's classified as a high hazard dam and the, the, uh, the classification of that is determined by the impacts of the dam if it were to fail. So if there's structures downstream of the dam, in this case there's a roadway and utilities across the dam, um, there's railroad tracks downstream of the dam, so if it were to fail, it would have a significant impact and put, uh, basically put lives at risk were it, to, were it to fail all of a sudden. So from that standpoint, uh, it's classified as a high hazard dam. Is that a federal or a state? That's a state classification. Yes, sir. Uh, you guys did studies on those recently in 2014. Did this fear ever come out of any of those studies? Anything like that come out of this? Well, there, there's always, it's always been known. Actually, there was a study done back in 1980 by the uh, Corps of Engineers that determined that the, the dam spillway was inadequate to pass a, a large volume of water. Um, up until recently, the dam was grandfathered into the dam safety regulations. Basically, any dams built before a certain date did not have to comply with new dam safety regulations. Um, so it, it was known, it has been known that the spillway was inadequate to pass the large volume of water coming through the watershed. Um, that's a relative term, though, because it, by today's standards, dams have to be designed to pass the probable maximum flood. So that's like a once in a thousand year or a once in 10,000 year event. So it's a pretty significant increase in capacity of the spillway. And in that case, do we look at just trying to fortify the dam or is it time to maybe move in another direction with that uh, stretch of road? Well, the, there's two, two options that have been considered. One is to fortify the dam. Basically, we'd armor the dam so if it overtopped, it wouldn't erode and and breach and fail. That's one option that has been looked at. The other option would be to basically drain the lake, remove the dam, and build a bridge over Blackwater Creek. So those are the two options that are being considered long term. When would ultimate decision be made on which way to go? Uh, that process is currently being handled by Public Works, their engineering department. I don't get, you know, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, we're, we're still studying that. We also need to consider the transportation uh, uh, system. We feel eventually that potentially Lakeside Drive could become four lanes in there and there might be an advantage to building a bridge as, to, as opposed to fortifying the dam. So we're still studying that and determining what our best option is for the, for the long term. Does this current situation with the dam um, speed up that process at all? Well, certainly, I think as we talk and get, we get work further into this problem, certainly that's something we're going to talk, have to talk about and figure out where do we go from here long term. Yes, absolutely.
Can you say when exactly that study began with wanting to do those changes to the contract? I, I cannot give you an exact date. No, ma'am, I'd have to get back with you. Uh, with previous knowledge that this dam could be problematic, um, why can the city address this sooner uh, with the solution to that? Well, we were working on it. It's a long-term process. It's a partnership with the University of, of Lynchburg, and uh, it, require, it requires careful study. We've got to look at our options, and we have been moving forward uh, right now, we are working on the environmental studies for the construction, so we have been moving forward uh, very deliberately. Certainly, we were, were, I've never expected the dam to top. In my career, I've seen it over top a couple times, and it, and it held. So this has just been an unfortunate incident, and we'll just have to move forward and figure out what the right solution is. Just, just another point related to that. A couple of years ago, the, the state General Assembly passed legislation that required the state to reevaluate the probable maximum flood and probable, ma probable maximum precipitation event. And basically, any dams that were in the process of being designed or renovated, basically that process was put on hold for about a year until the completion of that study to see ba what ultimately the dam had to be able to pass. So that was another delay in the process. As we were approaching a de final decision, that, that issue came up and delayed the process further as well. Has the high hazard dam designation been exacerbated by the fact that there's been development here, you've got more parking lots, uh, terrain that's higher than the dam itself? Uh, well, uh, the, the high hazard classification that came about, the dam safety regulations were revised about 10 years ago and included anything it's really not what's upstream of the dam that determines the classification it's the size of the impoundment and what's downstream of the dam that determines the classification and the risk of anything if the dam fails it's the risk to what's downstream that determines the classification yes um for people who uh, sustain damages in their homes and may not be insured how can they get help who they um, that would not be a question for me. One of the, one of the things that we learned from the most recent um, tornado was that we needed to create an after action recovery team. We will do the same um, for for this event, and we are beginning to figure out how to re how to create a response. Other questions? Sure. Can you talk about some of the short-term repairs you guys are doing to the dam, if any? We we actually had we had a conference call with an engineer, and we had we have two different engineering firms working on this right now. We had uh, Wiley and Wilson, which is a local engineering firm, that actually went out and did the visual boots on the ground inspection this morning, and then we're also working with Black and Veatch. We've been listening to officials give an update on the Virginia Dam that's been flooded due to rain. People in the town of Lynchburg have all been ordered to evacuate. Authorities there say that the town could be under 17 feet of water in just seven minutes. I want to turn now to another story we've been following. We've got some new news on the 12 year old girl who was abducted at a Washington DC airport. She has reportedly been found. Police had considered Jinjing Ma to be an extreme danger after she went missing at Reagan National Airport. The 12 year old girl was visiting the US from China and was with a tour group at the time. Police said that she appeared to walk off with an Asian woman who had approached her at a restroom. That set off a search for her and now the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children say that she has been found safe. We'll have more on this story as we learn it. Well, we're going to take a quick break. More news when we return. You're streaming CBSN.